Let's bring in some more voices from the markets to dig deeper into today's moves. Joining us now are Quincy Crosby, Chief Global Strategist for JPL Financial, and Jeff Kilberg, founder and CEO of KKM Financial and a CNBC produce, uh, contributor. Uh, Quincy, let me start with you. Uh, you know, you just heard Mike explain that the market was afraid of what it might hear and then, you know, not so afraid. Is that how you read it? Exactly. I mean, you could see it in the, in the market. It moved, it moved almost instantaneously. Granted, it was the algorithms that kicked in, you know, immediately. But the market kicked in and, and retail traders came in and investors came in thinking, hey, this, this is good news because remember something. Bostick was the one when we entered the new year thinking that would there, there'd be only maybe two rate hikes this, this year. He said, well, you know, we are going to keep rates higher for the whole year. And he depressed the market back then. And now he seems to be uh, the optimist in the market. Christopher Waller spoke today, too. And he said, well, you know, we'll have to see. It'll be data dependent. Jeff, I've got a question for you that might be a little naive here. I mean, we've got this next Fed meeting coming up at the end of this month. Uh, you know, is there anything in the markets in terms of fundamentals, profits and losses, things that companies will do, which will dominate our attention more than the Fed this month? Or is this going to be all about waiting for the Fed and watching for these signals each day as we see which speaker says what thing and what that indicates about the future? It, it is well, remarkable, yeah, I mean, Amy. Sorry, that one's for Jeff. Go ahead, Jeff. No, I think it's remarkable. You bring up a great point. I think Mike really hit on it. It's this pendulum that continues to swing too far in sentiment. So we got all excited about a potential Fed pause or potentially you know, some type of breathtaking coming out. And today, Bostic was not by any means dovish, but he was the first measured person to say that we're going to stay on course. We're not going to let the latest data in uh, inflation, which was hotter than expected, really derail us. So I think we have to take a big, deep breath as investors. But what's fascinating about today is that when we saw this Bostic comment, which certainly did kick in the algos and we moved the market higher, but it lined up with the 200-day moving average. So when you see this much emotion in the market, the trader, which you know started in me in the 1990s, the trader comes out and really focuses on the fact that you have to remove some of that emotion and focus on the technicals. So the fact that we closed above the 2 day moving average in the S&P 500 lines up with the fact that we are in a trading range. So I think we have to remain calm, cautiously optimistic. And to your point, the earnings season, it's been better than expected. I know it's been bifurcated. Certainly we've had some disappointments. But by and large, there's a lot of strength in the consumer. We're seeing that in some of the retailers this week, not all of them. But nonetheless, I think once we get through this next Fed meeting, I think we'll have the ability, and I envision actually, Eamon, to see some of this inflationary data really abate, really fall down. If we get that, that does give some cover for the Fed to finally remove that uber bearish, hawkish type of sentiment they're putting out there. Remain calm. That's always good advice. Mike, jump in here. I know you have a couple of questions you want to ask, too. Well, I guess uh, I would ask, really, Quincy, I mean, what is your premise right now in terms of whether, in fact, um, the Fed is going to have to do more than the economy can absorb? Because it's one of those things where, with the economy being stronger than anticipated coming into this year, is certainly a positive thing. Uh, it's something that probably explains why things like, you know, consumer discretionary stocks and industrials are holding up well, and some of the safer sectors, so to speak, are, are falling by the wayside. But just exactly how much can the Fed do before we get all these leading indicators of, of, of recession turning into an actual recession? Well, that, well, that's obviously the fear. And, you, and what you're seeing is, you know, the yield curve uh, inversions remain intact, not just here, but in, in Germany, for example. There's a, there's a concern that if they go too far uh, with the rate hikes, they are going to push us into a recession as opposed to even a mild recession, which could be seen as a softish landing, so to speak. But that's the concern, and I think it's the concern that the Fed has as well. But the Fed has to move us towards price stability. It's the mandate. It doesn't mean necessarily 2 percent. Maybe they get to 2.5 percent, but they're going to do it. And, you know, the fact is that the prices in the um, ISM manufacturing report, although the, the headline number was actually a little bit better than the last number, still, still in contraction territory, but prices paid was about 52, 53, meaning that it's expanding. We'll get another sense I, with the uh, service sector, which is the largest portion of the economy, and see what that has to say in terms of prices paid. This is the issue. You've got wages still high. You've got prices that are climbing. They're moving in the wrong direction. The mm -hmm. Fed doesn't want to see that.
Yeah, and certainly the market uh, has had a pattern of over-anticipating when things were going to uh, actually become a little more friendly on the inflation front in the last year or so. Jeff, uh, I'm interested in, uh, in exactly how you would frame out this trading range that you, that you see here. Uh, agree with you that the market, you know, kind of right on time with that 200-day average did manage to find some support. Does that mean that this is the lower end of the range or is it a, a wider band than that? I believe this is the lower end of the range, Mike, and I think we're continuing to see higher lows. And what's fascinating to see is that the 10-year note, yes, it's about 4%. I think the air is very thin to stay above 4% in the 10-year. Therefore, I think it's going to come back down. Once we get a better feeling, if there is really movement down in inflation, and if we do see the Fed, what's fascinating, when no one's really talking about in the Fed, Mike, and I know we talk about the terminal rate all day long, but look at their balance sheet. Their balance sheet is still $8.4 trillion. I like to look through that lens because that really provides a safety net. That liquidity, that big balance sheet is really the shock absorber in any type of landing, soft, hard, medium. But nonetheless, I think the Fed is going to really, by design, keep that inversion that Quincy talked about. That inversion has really helped the cost of capital go up. Counterintuitive, right? The Fed took forever to get inflation above their 2% target. Now they're scrambling to get it anywhere near under 4%. So I think the Fed is continuing to be in a conundrum here, but they're not going to fall and push into recession. I know we're talking about price cuts or interest rate cuts later in the year. I don't foresee that happening, but I think we're going to see one more rate hike and they're going to pause, sit on their hands and be measured like Bostic. It's great to have Bostic in the room. We need more Bostic and less uh, hawkishness. Hey, Jeff, let me ask you a question. You talked about the idea of inflation going down. Where are you looking for indicators that that's happening? I mean, are there particular commodity prices that you're thinking about uh, where you're going to see that start to tail off and say, OK, this is moving? And how much do you think it needs to move to really impact the market? And people say, hey, wait, this is permanent. Well, I think the inflation component is more in housing and autos. But yes, we always look at commodities, look at the price of oil, W2I kind of hanging in there at $75. But when you look at copper, Dr. Copper has always been a great bellwether to look at to get a better understanding of demand. Certainly with China, you know, they saw their manufacturing activity, the most robust and the fastest expansion over a decade. So will that reopening kind of help that global inflation? Possibly. But I think you have to really look at housing. Housing has really had a substantial move lower because that cost of capital we talk about, now you're seeing the 30-year mortgage float back above 7%. That's very damaging to the buyer, but that lack of buyer, that lack of demand should help bring down inflation, which was way out of control as we saw rates too far, too long, too low for all those years. Jeff, I can tell you that out in the suburbs where I live, that 7% number, the, the mortgage rates, that's like what everyone is talking about. That, there's like a Kryptonite. psychological impact to that, right? It's, it's right. fascinating it's to watch it play out. Mike, Quincy, Jeff, that's all the time we have uh, for right now. But thank you all for your exp expertise. Really appreciate it.